Does it often appear to others that you're crushing life, but in reality, you feel like life is crushing you? I can identify with that. Get ready to be spellbound by Chris King. He is a living embodiment of triumph against all odds. You are definitely going to want to stick around for today's conversation. The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Rat Race Reboot. I'm your host, Laura Noel. And as a certified coach and former 27-year military leader, each week I provide bite-sized mindset pivots that will help you reset your mind, reawaken your spirit, and regain your control. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Rat Race Reboot. I'm really excited to have this conversation with Chris. I just want to welcome you to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Oh my gosh, I am thrilled to have you here. And I know that you are going to just pour in some goodness into our listeners today, and they're going to be inspired by what you have to share. I I would love to start out by hearing a little bit about you. If you wouldn't mind sharing with our listeners your story, what got you here today? Oh man, that's a really long story. <laughs> How do I do that succinctly? Um, okay, so succinctly, I would say that I I, I grew up in um, in a very privileged neighborhood in a very scary house, and um, you know we I, I I jokingly say that I would I, I had a dysfunctional childhood, but I think that implies there's another kind, and so it's just a question of levels, right? But um, you know through my my eldest sister died when she was 11 and and that created a, a as you can imagine some family problems growing up and um and I was raised in a house of grief and rage and abuse and addiction and and I built my life on those pillars and you know after a couple failed marriages and reinventing myself again and again and again through careers and relationships and everything um I I finally learned how to kind of recode my my inner operating system so that I could produce a life by design. Mm, I love that. Recode your inner operating system so you could create a life by design. Um, I, so what is this life by design? What's different now that you've learned to recode your operating system? Well, every, analogy. everything is different and anything can be different again should i choose it it's a it's it's a question of what is aligned right i i i often say there's there's no good or bad there's no right or wrong there is aligned or misaligned with the goals you want to achieve with the experience you want to have with the life you want to live and um and there's really i don't know that there's anything more excruciatingly painful particularly a low level of pain over an extended period of time than living a life out of alignment. And one of my teachers, um, Dr. Robert Holden, he said, if it seems like there's something missing from your life, it's probably you. Wow. See, now that was funny in the moment, but then I had your reaction. I was like, huh, whoa, hold on a second. And Just that landed for me, right? Yeah. Because I just don't think that anybody came here to work hard, pay taxes, and die. Like there's a there's a purpose, you know. As Mark Twain said, I'm just going to drop another quote. You know, um, that the two most important days of your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. Well, mm -hmm. I built this organization to make to make sure that individuals, organizations, teams, they know why and they are on that path. Uh, God, there's so much power in what you said. I mean, first of all, that's what's missing from life is you and that power of feeling like you're in alignment, like you know why you're here on this earth. And it's interesting because I can identify with that for many, many years, not really knowing what my purpose was. I was looking for my purpose and you know, I felt like something was missing. That fulfillment certainly was not there. And mm -hmm. you mentioned that low grade um, kind of pain or dissatisfaction that oftentimes we, we just accept it. We're not happy, but we don't know what to do to get out of it and shift it. Um, so 
How did you find alignment? Well, the first thing I had to realize was what was, what was really going on because it's it's more than just accepting it. It's normalizing it, right? Because we're like, it's one thing to accept that which we do not like, but it's another thing to completely normalize it and lose sight of the fact that we really don't like it. Um, you know, for me, it just showed up in working the wrong jobs and dating the wrong people and doing the wrong drugs. And okay, granted, doing a few of the right drugs, right? I mean, if it's <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, um, but uh, like ultimately, like I said, there, there's nothing more painful than, than living in a way that is, that is not what you came here for. And there's nothing more beautiful than being in that space, just knowing that you are, you are on point and, and you are making the impact that you were built to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's powerful. And what kind of transformation have you seen as a result of people gaining this clarity? Because I want to talk about, you know, what people are, are experiencing, what you're noticing, and then how, how do we get there and how can we share this and how can people, you know, learn to do this for themselves, whether it's coaching with somebody or doing some things on their own, how can people get started with all of this? Those are a, a million questions, right? We'll <laughs> go through them kind of one by one as they, as the conversation goes on. But, um, yeah, it, well, it, it's just fascinating. Well, where do you want to start? There's a lot. There's a lot there. Um, yeah, a lot of rabbit holes. So keep me focused here. Otherwise, I'll talk all day. Getting me to talk <laughs> is easy. Getting me to shut up is the trick. So <laughs> uh, I guess um, what have you seen in terms of transformation in others or yourself, whatever you feel comfortable sharing once yeah. you've found that alignment? Because it can feel pretty scary to find that alignment and then take a different path that you've when you've been kind of accustomed to this one path that you've been on. Actually, what's scary is finding what's in alignment and then committing to that path. That, mm. That'll that scare the hell out of you. Um, yeah. But I'll, I'll tell you what, the results, you asked about the results. Um, I used to be very hesitant to talk about results because they seem completely impossible. They seem like this is really grandiose and this is salesy. No, I'm, what I'm telling you is here's what I've actually seen. Uh, we we had a client that had a uh, an HR consulting company, and she said she had four goals. She said she wanted to take her six figure business to a seven figure business. She said she didn't want to work more than thirty hours a week. She said she wanted to be a digital nomad so she could travel all over and be wherever, whenever, whenever she wanted. And then she half jokingly said, "I'd really like to find the man that is someday going to be my husband." We got all that done in nine months. Mm. I had another client call us up and uh, this was a one-on-one -on -one engagement. And she said that in four and a half months, we doubled her revenues, we eliminated her stress and we saved her marriage. The, the, the impact, the results of this work and the way that, that we do it cannot be understated. Yeah. And I, you know, it's possible. I mean, I, you know, I think about, energy and alignment. And you, I love that you mentioned that this, the HR consulting person half jokingly said one of her goals, but how often do we have an inclination or a desire for something, but we don't think we can get it. And so we don't, we either don't commit or we half jokingly say it, mm -hmm. but when we put it out there, when we speak it, um, I don't, we're, we're getting in alignment with that place, that goal, that, that is a place that is an energy. You know, and, and I love that you mentioned that because everything is energy, yeah. you know, and, and this is what I learned growing up. Um, you know, my father, he, he's, um, he's one of those super smart guys, like never went to college, barely got out of high school. And his career was, he was an electromagnetic compatibility engineer. And so we grew up talking, I didn't talk baseball growing up. He was talking to me about string theory and quantum physics and whatever, <laughs> like this is all, like all the nerd stuff. But, but when you do talk about energy, um, I, I'll give you an example of this. Um, I'll, I'll actually provide you an experience. Somebody, somebody listening is going to feel this when we talk about commitment, you know, we're going to commit to something, a goal or a life or whatever it is, we're going to make that commitment. Well, notice what you feel in your body. When you say that I'm committed, I am committing to this. 
Well, now notice what you say, what, what you feel and what you experience in your body when you say, I am devoted. Mm -hmm. I am devoted to this. Now that has a different charge. It has a completely different frequency. Commitment is very masculine in its energy. It's very heady, very based on execution, achievement, accomplishment, doing. Devotion is like reverence. It's that falling on your knees, complete um, surrender. And it has a totally different frequency. And in my experience, when you are devoted to something and then you commit to it, you can bend the universe. Love that. I love that distinction. I can feel the difference just thinking about the mm -hmm. words committed versus devoted. Wow. Right. Do you hear how hard commitment is? Commitment's a choice. Yeah. Devotion is not. Mm, it's almost it's, like a like a calling almost. It's it's almost it's, it's like an isness. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's just when and you know, we see this, you know, show up in romantic partnership or whatever, there's a difference between commitment and devotion. And I and I think anybody can connect with that in some somewhere in their framework. They'll be like, I get it. Mm, yeah. I that just brings it to a whole nother level. And, you know, mm. I always tell people feeling is the conscious awareness of the energy or vibration you're in. Mm -hmm. And when you connect to your heart's desires, even just shifting committed to devoted, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I feel a difference just even yeah. in saying it. And I can't wait to play around with this idea too. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. That is You're a welcome. nugget. <laughs> that is that is cool. But you know, another thing that you said, it's a reverence, it's a surrender. Mm -hmm. And I always, and this was a hard thing for me to grasp because I'm always, I've always been a type A overachiever. And so, and being in the military, very masculine energy, and um, you know, had to have that grit. Mm -hmm. And what my when I really started excelling and growing, it was that that surrender that I had to welcome into my life. That was the idea of reaching whatever your desires are through the path of least resistance. Actually, in my old type A overachiever mindset, that felt gross. It felt like I was being lazy, but mm. I had to shift that. And it really, that aligns with this idea of surrender and the isness mm -hmm. of devotion. I just, mm -hmm. I love this. Well, and, and, and because it has a different feeling state, it, um, you know, basic neuroscience, feelings drive actions, actions produce results. So if you have a different feeling state, well, you're going to take different actions. You're, you're actually, you know, in, in that moment, we just physiologically changed the way your brain was functioning. Like, you know, the, like the neurotransmitters, like everything changed, the neurochemistry changed slightly. Yeah. And that is going to produce different actions, which will produce different results, which produces a different reality. Right. Right. So this is what I say. It's all about alignment. There's no good or bad. There's no right or wrong. There is aligned or misaligned with the experience, with the outcome, with whatever. Mm. And so what would you say to, to a listener out there who they don't know whether they're aligned or not. If you don't know if you're aligned or you're not, you're not. Done. You're not. Yeah, you're not. You know, you're in that, I don't know. Here's the thing about I don't know. Um, I don't know is a lie uh, because it means one of two things. I don't know. How do I frame that? Hang on. Uh, I don't know is a defense mechanism. And because the thing that is in there that is not in your awareness, it's about access, right? It's not that you don't know. Like whatever you think you don't know, you actually know. You just don't have access to the knowing. There is something that is activated and preventing your awareness of what you don't know you do know. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and a lot of times it's because I don't want to know because I know the answer is going to scare the hell out of me. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, that's essentially what it takes is this, um, willingness to 
have the shit scared out of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you've seen this as well. If, um, well, the, I don't know, um, we do have, we, we do have the answers in us and yes. we just have to uncover them. Mm -hmm. Also, I'll see people looking outside of themselves for the knowing. And I know that was me in the rat race. Um, mm -hmm. It was exhausting looking outside of myself for the answers instead of really just quieting down and being curious about what was in there. <laughs> right. And having the courage to do that. Yeah. Having the courage to, to be willing to confront it. Um, one of the things is, is to release any judgment about it. You know, if we're, if we're holding judgment against it, it's wrong, it's bad. Here's what it is, you know, and, and we're holding that against it. We're not going to want to look at it. Right. So that, that just has to go. You know, I said, look, I, I, you know, we can make the impossible a reality, but you're going to have to be wrong about a lot of things. And be okay. Yeah. Be okay yeah. with that. Yeah. And I, t and I tell, you know, I tell clients all the time, whether there is, whether we're working on something personal or professional, I said, look, do you want to be right? Or do you want to be effective? Do you want to be right? Or do you want to be quick? Do you want to be right? Or do you want to get the thing you say you want? You know, and, and we've heard this, do you want to be, do you want to be right? Or do you want to be loved? You know, right or happy? Yep. Yep. If you're willing to sacrifice being right, you'll, you'll move the, you'll move the planet. Yeah, because we can only take us as far as our conscious awareness will take us. So if we're always right, right then we're not growing right. at all. That's exactly <laughs> it. Yeah. Get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, uh, out of your comfort zone and stay within your range. Right. If you go, if you go too far, if you go out of range, that's beyond your capacity, whether it's emotional, psychological, energetic, physical, yeah. whatever. If you go beyond your capacity, then you're going to contract. But if you can stay out of your comfort zone and st stay within range, then things get interesting. Mm, yeah. You know, talking about getting access, I, I want to touch on that a little bit. Getting a access to the awareness and the knowing that's already inside of you. Mm -hmm. How does somebody begin to gain access? Um, I'm all about tools. So I'll give you, I'll give you one way that works really well. It's one of my okay. favorite, uh, in a, in a case like this, the first thing to do is forbid yourself from doing anything with the information. Like you're literally not allowed. Like I I've done this with clients like, okay, I am energetically binding you for the next 60 days. You are not allowed to do anything with the new information. Right. And what that does is it creates a safe container for the ego to say, okay, nothing's going to change. I'm not going to do anything. I just, okay. And it sort of releases its grip and it allows the access. And if you're willing to quiet your mind enough, as soon as you ask the question, you will hear the answer. This is not a thinking thing. It's a listening thing. So it's sort of meditative in that regard. Now, I'll give you an example. What I'm talking about is I was working with a client, um, uh, another a different HR company, and and she had built it up over 20 years and was at this plane where I don't know what what I want to do. Do I want to keep going? Do I want to do something else? Do I want like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I said, okay, you're not allowed. I did this exercise. You're not allowed to do anything with the information. And I said, what is true? And her whole body just surrendered. Her shoulders dropped. She just this big sigh came out. She goes. Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And there it was. And yeah. she was like, oh God, that feels good to be able to admit because the ego was not going to let her know that because it was going to straight go to, but how am I going to make money? And what am I going to do? And then what do I, and like all the noise, right? Mm -hmm. So in that container of permission of safety, where you're not doing anything, the ego goes, okay, fine. You can know it. Yeah. I love that. Great. Too. I mean, this is true in romantic partnership. I mean, when, if, if we really want to get real about these kinds of things right now, somebody is talking about how they don't know what to do about their current relationship or situationship. And I'm going to tell that person right now. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You do. And you know, you do. If you will allow yourself the dignity of the truth. And you don't have to do anything in this moment or next week or in a month. You don't have to do anything ever. 
giving yourself permission enough to know is at least being self-respecting and self-honoring um, and, and connected to yourself. Yeah. You have a choice. You have yeah. a choice. All right. Everything is a choice. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. You can choose to know without having to do. You have that freedom. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's um that's interesting because you know, we may not want to know. Again, we might be uncomfortable and then that fear comes in. Our mm -hmm. brain is designed to keep us comfortable even if we mm -hmm. don't like our situation. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it it doesn't realize that change and forward movement is a good thing. It's trying to keep us safe. Mm -hmm. So we have all these things. We just have to learn how to play that mind game and win. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of ways to do it. It's it's just hacking your own system. I mean, I, you know, people ask me what I do for a living. I'm really, I'm just a systems hacker. You know, everything is a system, a, yeah. a business, a, a car, a computer, a person is a system. And any system can be hacked and recoded if you understand that system well enough. Yeah. So getting to the other aspects of the system. So now we have an awareness, we mm -hmm. have a knowing, and we can choose whatever direction we want to go in now that we have this knowing that's already inside of us. And so say we start moving forward, mm -hmm. how do we kind of change the coding once we have this awareness and we move forward. That's a lot of tools and a lot of practice. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you, sometimes sometimes it's easier than you think. And and sometimes it's a lot quicker than we think. Um, you know, I, I sat down, I sat down with a woman as as a favor to a friend kind of thing. It was a, you know, uh it's a best friend of hers, and she's having problems in her marriage. And over the course of an hour of a conversation, this, this switch happened. And, you know, you might have some aha moments or whatever, but to truly sustainable transformation, it doesn't necessarily take as much time as you think. I called her up six weeks later. She said, we've never been, she says, that was the piece. She says, my husband and I have never been better. Like it's, it's incredible. And so that it's, it can be shockingly easy. It can it can be painful. It can be scary. It can be any number of things. Um, you know, there's no way to forecast how that's going to go. Yeah, and I, it just reminds me of uh, when I was in a personal development goal achieving group. Mm -hmm. We always said suffering is optional. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, pain is inevitable. <laughs> suffering is optional. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's, because that's a choice too. It's you know right. how do we reframe it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's true, but we are the creators of our reality, 100%. Um, I am 100% in agreement with that. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. This is so good. Um, gosh, what are we missing here? I I love this topic of conversation. We could go in a million different directions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love this idea of finding your truth um, and discovering that truth. Within well, let us. me touch on that for a second. Yeah. Um, see, that's that's where things get interesting. Oh, okay. um, there's a difference between my truth and the truth. And people don't like this part, <laughs> but I'll explain it. My truth is all about preferences. It's what I like and don't like, want or don't want. It's my truth. This is right. Mm -hmm. the truth is a frequency. It's that resonant thing that lands in your body. And, you know, the, the way it was described to me by one of my teachers um, was that it's, it's like the note of a, of a guitar, right? E is just E. There's no debating that. It just is. And how that, and here's the funny thing about the truth. The truth doesn't give a shit about your truth, your opinions, your, it doesn't care. It, it simply is. Yeah. And an example of that would be when my, when my last romantic partnership ended, I wanted to stay in it and fix it. And like, my truth was, I love her. I want to be together. I want to figure this out. The truth 
was that in the highest service to both of us, we needed to break this, end this, and split in different directions. And I will tell you right now, she's actually one of my best friends. I talk to that woman almost every day. I mean, just texting or whatever. But we have this, we've settled into such a beautiful platonic friendship and we know each other so well and, and we're really mental with each other so we can have these really interesting conversations. We can tell each other when we're doing stupid stuff and other dating scenarios or whatever. Um, but had I been clinging so desperately to my truth, my life would not have settled into the groove that I was designed for and that, you know, to really show up and serve in a way that's more meaningful. Because mm. it was costing me too much energy, right? That relationship was expensive with yeah. energy. And as soon as it was done, like like things happened, you know, like that fell apart and like three new clients come into the organization just out of nowhere it's because the energy was freed up and now we got space for it. Yeah. Oh, that is so powerful because when we can't expect the new to come in when we're clinging on to the old, there's no room for right. it. Right. Um, there's no space. Um, and it's scary because we can see what we're losing, but we don't know what we have to gain. And that's the beauty. Also. Right. Like somebody right now is thinking about having their first child. There's a couple out there right now that's like, you know, we're going to start trying. It's like, well, have you built the nursery yet? Well, no, we're going to wait until we get pregnant. Wrong answer. You, yeah. build the, you build the nursery now to create the space and to put yourself in the frequency of parent. Like that changes your frequency and that has an effect on physical world reality. Let me nerd out for a second here. The act of looking at an object has a physical effect on that object at the subatomic level. And we know that thoughts are things. And so when we start taking action at the physical, building a nursery, it changes our frequency, it changes our physiology. This supports the success of getting pregnant to begin with. So yes, to your point, Laura, create the space for the thing you want first, as opposed to trying to get the thing and then figure out where to stick it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, similarly, I have a little exercise that I ask clients to do is write 50 things that they would be, do, or have once they've realized their vision mm -hmm. and probably all 50 of them, they could do now mm -hmm. in, in, at some level. So if you have your dream home and it's a certain kind of decor and maybe you're not able to buy the dream home yet, get something that represents that decor. So you're mm -hmm. experiencing it every day or Right. If you want the money, have a plan for the money. What would you spend it on? What would you do? Start planning. Those are right. all oh, so important. And, and get rid of the things that no longer align with where you're headed, right? If that's yeah. if that's the, my ex-wife left me when I was wearing that shirt shirt, get rid of that shirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah. serving you. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. This is so much goodness. I, I hope you all are enjoying this because this there's some truth bombs here just being left and really wonderful nuggets of wisdom. And I definitely encourage everyone to listen to this again. I know I will, cause I'm taking copious notes here, but this is really incredible. Um, is there anything that we haven't covered today? Cause we've covered a lot of groundwork today. Well, I would I would say that you know because my my organization is all oriented around achieving the the seemingly impossible, and the seemingly impossible comes up in any number of ways. Like you you figure out what's your moonshot because for some people it's buy their first home, for for somebody else it's how do I get out of my soul sucking job and launch a bakery, or uh, you know how do I um, you know start a family? How do I end a family? Right? <laughs> I mean, how do I get out of this mess? Right? <laughs> Um, there, there's, you know, the, the miserable millionaire, as we like to call it, that's achieved all the things, but just hates their life. There's, uh, and there's the failure to launch 20 somethings. How do I get my 25 year old off the couch and into like life, right? Like the seemingly impossible is all over the place. And it is possible if you change your orientation to this, and then you leverage everything you have and everything you are with that devotion and commitment to that outcome, uh, I can guarantee you, 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 you will change your universe. 
And I can actually even guarantee you success. What I can't guarantee you is what success looks like. That may change through through the process. But you cannot fail at this work. You can either do it or not do it. Yeah, it's, you know, we if we go one direction, we might get moved in a, another one. It's like we have our destination and we might, the path to get there might shift. Right. It's okay. It might lead you to a completely different destination. But had you yeah. not taken the journey, you wouldn't have seen the other thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's what we say is FISA, full investment, zero attachment. Mm, I love that. Full investment, zero attachment. And you're in flow. Yes. Yeah, that's flow is a great tool. We, that's how this company, uh, one of the it's at its iteration was was all about training in flow. And now flow is a tool we use to get there. But um, but yeah, you you get yourself into the zone and you'll make amazing things happen. Ah, 100 percent. Oh, my gosh. Well, this has been amazing. I, I really want to thank you again for pouring into our audience, into our listeners. Um, I'm really grateful. And for those of you who um, are just loving this conversation, which I'm sure all of you are, I encourage you to get in contact with Chris. And he is at statusflow.net. That's the website. We'll have that in the show notes. So you don't miss out on that opportunity. But again, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And, you know, like I said, I love uh, I love sharing this. So thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate you. You are most welcome. Well, for those of you listening, remember, everything is created twice, first in your imagination and then in physical form. So until we meet again, have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates. 